we are still not able to be in the same room physically. But I am with you, even if it's through this video, and I appreciate that you're sharing this. Pray for me as I prepare these, as I pray for you, as you have to listen to them. And may God be glorified by what we are able to do together and be creative in the ways that the Spirit can draw us together and be the family of God. Our Bible reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, God prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branches cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. May we be guided and encouraged by these words. Amen. John 15 is a very familiar passage of Scripture to those who have lived in the Bible for a long time. And there's just a couple of things I would like to draw out of it for us today. First is that we are the branches, Jesus is the vine. The vine is connected to the roots. 
and through from the roots the vine feeds the branches. Now you can take a lot of the branches off a grapevine and it will still live. It will still produce fruit. But if you kill the vine, the branches can't do anything on their own. It, he, here it says, without me you can do nothing, Jesus says. We are connected. That's encouraging to me because the food and the nurturing and the basis of the fruit all come from the vine. Not from our smarts, not from our strength, not from our great experience or our training, not any university degrees or professional certificates. It comes from the vine. The vine sprouts the branches. And if the branches stay connected, then we grow much fruit. It's a wonderful image of God through Jesus Christ nurturing us. We are not connected directly to the roots, to God without the vine. And so it is not dependent upon our skills or our desires that we can bear much fruit. It is dependent upon the roots and the vine. It's time perhaps, if we aren't already doing it, to relax in God. Trust in God. Depend upon the vine. And you will produce fruit. Now, we may not know what the fruit is that God is going to prepare from us. Maybe you're an olive branch. Maybe you're an apple branch. But it comes from the trunk. It comes from the vine, not from our own desires. And that's a neat kind of thing to trust God that you produce fruit simply because you are attached to the vine. The other side of that, of course, is if the branch doesn't produce fruit, it's pruned away. But if we stay attached and let the sap of the vine nurture us, then we will bear much fruit. Because with Christ we can do anything, which is the other side of it as well, that Paul says, I can do all things through Christ. Just as Jesus says, you can't do anything without me. It's a fascinating image, and those of you who like gardening will have many such images of the dependence of parts of the plant on other parts in order for the fruit to grow. And that there needs to be a vine grower, a vine dresser, a farmer, I prefer, who looks after the plant. You know, if you grow tomatoes, it's wonderful to watch them, but unless you support the plant, the tomatoes get too heavy and they either fall on the ground and rot, touching the ground, or they'll actually break the branch and break the feed so that the tomato fruit dies away. So we need the farmer as well. Jesus Christ, the vine that feeds us, God the Father, the farmer, who makes sure that everything in the garden is well protected and well supported. And so it's those two things. It's in this same passage that Jesus makes an explanation about prayer that sometimes people forget because we go to Jesus in prayer and we ask God for this or for that and from that we are hoping to get an answer according to our prayers but it sometimes doesn't work out that way. Jesus says here very clearly in terms we can all get is that 
if my word abides in you, not just the words of Scripture, but the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the directives of God that lead our spirit into successful and fruitful living for God. So if my words abide in you, and you abide in me, then you can ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. But notice this condition. If we pray for something we want, something that we want to feed our opinions, to feed our own senses, to feed our own goals and aspirations and fame, why would God give us that? This little section that we read says, this is what glorifies my Father. And uh, in these things that you stay connected and that you become my disciples. As we serve Jesus Christ, we bless and glorify the Father. And so it's staying in tune with God, letting the Holy Spirit fill our minds, knowing in from Philippians that God will create in us both the will and the way to do God's will. God will place within us because of the Spirit living in us, because Jesus is in us, the temple of God, to actually want what God wants, to begin to lower our own desires, our own expectations, to make the world bigger than us in the center. And as that happens, and as our world grows into the spirit world that is God, we are more likely to draw upon God's strength to ask and to do the things that God wants, because they become what we want also. It's something we work on our whole lives. And we need to be reminded of it, perhaps from time to time, to remember that our goal for peaceful living is to trust God and trust God's timing and trust God's plan. I do not know the whole mind of God. I cannot understand the plans that God has for me or for us, because they are way beyond my ability to understand all the complicated factors that God can hold together and bring together in such a way that God's will is done. Yes, as we rest in God, as we look for God's will, then we bear fruit. And these are some of the things we know are God's will for us. If we know it's God's will that we go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them to observe everything that Jesus commanded us. We know that's God's will. It doesn't mean that I have to go to India to be an evangelist or a missionary. I can do that through other missionaries, through my giving, through my prayers. But to go, to preach and to teach, not to remain silent, although sometimes silence is the great gift that God gives us to be to the world. Just read something that says, if you cannot learn kindness, learn to be quiet. <laughs> it's not from the Bible, but it's very interesting teaching. And so we are drawn into this. We also know that it's the will of God that none should perish, that all should be saved. So when we pray for someone to be saved, that they would know God's love, we know we are in God's will and we can pray with confidence. How that is answered, we do not know because each person must make their own choice. But we know we are praying within the will of God when we're praying that. And so, we are the branches. The fruit grows on us. Isn't that amazing that God allows such a wondrous blessing upon us? But it's the vine that feeds us. 
so that the fruit grows. Thanks be to God who makes us fruit bearers on the vine. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you that Jesus is the vine and you are the farmer. And we thank you that you care about us and nurture us in such a way that we will bear much fruit to your glory. We thank you that we are able to be a part of the great kingdom of God by bearing the fruit that you assign to us. We are grateful that you sent people to us, around us, that we might be people to bear fruit from the goodness of your love for everyone. We understand, O oh God, that there are times when we will need to be pruned, that there will be parts of us that need to be cast away so that we can bear better fruit and more fruit to bring glory to you. And so grant to us, O oh God, wisdom and patience to bear with the work that you do in such love for our benefit and those around us, to be purified and readied, O oh God for the work that you have for us and for the benefit of others around us. We thank you, O God, that you love us so much, that you abide in us and we can abide in you. Teach us to keep your commandments so that we can abide in your love. And Teach us again, O God, that as we abide in you, we have joy, your joy, the joy of your salvation within us, and our joy can be complete when we work in your plan. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. We lift up to you, O God, those who are not yet disciples of Jesus Christ. We also lift up to you the prayers that each of us brings in the many forms that prayer takes. And we support one another and we lift these prayers up to you, O God, in love for each other and trusting in your great and endless love for us. We pray also, O oh God, for those around us who may be sharing this in the same room, who live in the same building as us, who care for us and care about us. O oh God, may we never take for granted the love that is around us. Let us pray the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
by this God is glorified that we bear much fruit and we become disciples of Jesus. Go in the joy of the salvation of God to preach and teach and be the light of the world. Amen.